EA just cannot seem to stay away from legal trouble, and, well, that's because they continue to engage in morally questionable business practices, namely in the form of loot boxes, aka gambling in video games. And as a result, we have seen EA face a number of lawsuits. Back in August 14, 2020, it was reported that folks in California have sued EA over the claim that EA is violating gambling laws in California, and this was a case brought by a fellow named Ramirez on behalf of a hundred others. And overseas, EA is facing another class action lawsuit in Canada, where plaintiffs Mark Sutherland and Sean Moore claimed that EA was engaging in unlicensed illegal gaming systems in over 60 titles, referring, of course, to the loot boxes, which are straight up gambling. You know which loot boxes aren't gambling, though? Yong Yeah Surprise Mechanics, actually quite fun and quite ethical. Just squeeze it when you're stressed or frustrated at the state of the industry or loot box shenanigans. We've got Cups, that parody, Bethesda's Nuka Dark Rum screw up. We've got Cyberpunk Yong, yeah, sure, so we've got hats, and every purchase goes a long way in helping the channel. So I hope you'll check out the store at yongya.com. But back to the news. So this is a report from October 21st, 2020. Fast forward a week, and EA was dealing with another case in the Netherlands where the Dutch courts actually sided with the Gambling Commission when the Gambling Commission claimed that EA's loot boxes were gambling, and so that led to EA being fined because they refused to comply with the gambling laws. And EA is appealing, but... I doubt that that's going to really go anywhere. Which finally brings us to today's lawsuit story. This is a report from Games Industry published on November 11th, 2020, so just two days ago. And the headline reads, EA faces yet another class action lawsuit connected to loot boxes. Now... This lawsuit deals less directly with loot boxes and more with certain systems that encourage the purchase of loot boxes in the form of what EA has called dynamic difficulty adjustment in their patents, which is basically a system or algorithm that will adjust the difficulty based on the performance of the player. So if they're doing really well, the game might get harder, and if they're doing really poorly, the game might get easier to ease frustration. That's the goal, but the concern is also how that will be exploited to drive players into purchasing microtransactions and loot boxes. You can imagine a scenario where a game will artificially make itself more difficult for a specific player and then encourage them to visit the shop to purchase either direct microtransactions or gamble for the chance of obtaining the rewards that will allow them to remain competitive and whatnot. So the plaintiffs of this class action lawsuit, Jason Zajonk, Daniel Williams, and Pranko Lalzano, who filed this lawsuit in the U.S. District Court of Northern California, they accuse EA of using its patented dynamic difficulty adjustment technology in three of its EA sports franchises, Madden, NFL, FIFA, and NHL, across Across all games ranging back to the 2017 versions. It is explained right here that on the surface level, dynamic difficulty adjustment is intended to ensure players don't get too bored or too frustrated when a game is too easy or too hard, respectively. But the plaintiffs say that EA uses this technology to push players into purchasing more loot boxes in the form of player packs, saying that it effectively makes even high stat players not play as well as they should. And beyond that, EA is accused of using this technology with Without disclosing it to players, without being transparent about this system's implementation. Games Industry also pulled some quotes from the lawsuit, which read as follows. EA's undisclosed use of difficulty-adjusting mechanisms deprive gamers who purchase player packs of the benefit of their bargains because EA's difficulty adjustment mechanisms, rather than only the stated ranking of the gamer's ultimate team players and the gamer's relative skill, dictates or at least highly influences the outcome of the match. This is a self-perpetuating cycle that benefits EA to the detriment of EA Sports sports gamers, since difficulty adjusting mechanisms make gamers believe their teams are less skilled than they actually are, leading them to purchase additional player packs in hopes of receiving better players and being more competitive. So the accusation is that EA is psychologically luring players into purchasing loot boxes by artificially limiting their capabilities even when they have some of the high tier rewards. Basically, EA is being accused of designing these games so that players 
constantly feel like they are below par, like they're not competitive enough so that they feel like they have to keep gambling for those rewards in order to rise up through the ranks. And thus, the plaintiffs say that EA's actions violate the California Consumers Legal Remedies Act, false advertising law, unfair competition law, and qualify as unjust enrichment. And finally, apparently the group is seeking the court to compel EA to stop misinterpreting player packs and cards, including a corrective advertising campaign and restitution of funds acquired by any practices the court deems unlawful. Now, Electronic Arts was reached out for comment about this, and in response to Games Industry, EA provided this statement, We believe the claims are baseless and misinterpret our games, and we will defend. So EA is fully denying these accusations that such a system them has been implemented in their EA Sports title since 2017. And obviously, for my part, it's hard to say how much of these accusations are true. I have not looked into the source code of these games. And, you know, unless you do a deep dive of how these games are made, it's really hard to say for sure. A proper investigation will need to be done before we are able to determine whether EA has, in fact, done what they're being accused of. But that's not to say that I haven't noticed a lot of people accusing EA of dynamically adjusting difficulty, people posting videos videos with evidence and the like, or going to the FIFA subreddit to express their grievances. Even in comment sections of articles like this from back in 2019, when EA claimed that uh, they're not using dynamic difficulty for FIFA 19, people express their suspicions with uh, folks like this stating, I guess we'll never know unless we get a job on the FIFA team, but it certainly feels like there is a sense of momentum in the game. Many times have I had a penalty safe to see the other team appear to rally and go on to score a goal, or other moments where suddenly your team misplaces every pass until you concede a goal. Maybe it's just psychological. Somebody else responded by saying, same with me playing online, broken passes, every shot and pass deflection goes to the opposition, tackles refuse to connect, opponent stamina boosts, all topped off with the sweaty goal to concede. Again, hard to say for sure how much of this is psychological and how much of this actually does have to do with systems implemented by EA. But given EA's suspicious activities these past few years, given EA's track record and history of dishonesty, I understand why so many people would be suspicious and why so many would refuse to believe any claims that EA makes, any denials they make. Not to mention it doesn't help EA's case that the terms monetization and spending come up quite often when looking at these patents for dynamic difficulty adjustment or engagement-based matchmaking, which I'll talk about in a bit. But when it comes to dynamic difficulty adjustment, this is the basic description that EA provides in their patent, which reads, Dynamic difficulty adjustment, DDA, is a technique for adaptively changing a game to make it easier or harder. A common paradigm to achieve DDA is through heuristic prediction and intervention, adjusting game difficulty once undesirable players stay States, e.g. boredom or frustration are observed. Without quantitative objectives, it is impossible to optimize the strength of intervention and achieve the best effectiveness. In this paper, we propose a DDA framework with a global optimization objective of maximizing a player's engagement throughout the entire game. Using level-based games as our example, we model a player's progression as a probabilistic graph. Dynamic difficulty reduces to optimizing transition probabilities to maximize a player's stay time in the progression graph. We have successfully developed a system that applies this technique in multiple games by Electronic Arts and have observed up to 9% improvement in player engagement with a neutral impact on monetization. So the mention of monetization in this system clearly shows that they're at the very least thinking about how this stuff will affect monetization. And given the greediness of the EA executives, no doubt that given the chance they would try to maximize monetization as much as possible with such a system. But also they say right here that they have successfully developed a system that applies this technique in multiple games by Electronic Arts. Right here, they seem to be saying that this system has been tested and applied to multiple games by EA. And yet in response to the lawsuit, EA said that their claims are baseless and misinterpret their games. Now, I don't know if 
they're refuting the very existence of dynamic difficulty in their games or just refuting the notion that the system was implemented to maximize monetization and to trick players and psychologically lure them into their microtransaction shop. But given the mention of monetization and patents like this, given EA says right here that this stuff has been applied in multiple EA games, and again, given their history of dishonesty, why on earth would I trust that EA won't find a way to exploit a system like like this if they're given free reign. Beyond dynamic difficulty, you also have engagement optimized matchmaking, which you can see in the following patent from back in 2017, an engagement optimized matchmaking framework and details can be found in the Google patents version of this submission. And just, I mean, looking for the word spending, you can see right here how it's brought up multiple times. So right here, it talks about how the retention analysis system can then output a retention rate and or a prediction spending amount for each individual user included in the match plan and or for the match plan itself. Right here, it talks about a predicted amount of spending for each user and or a predicted amount of spending in total for the match plan. It doesn't get clearer than this quote right here. In some embodiments, the prediction models are applied at the beginning of the game to generate a match plan or to confirm that the match plan satisfies a particular condition, such as, for example, retention rate or likelihood that the user spend a particular amount of in-game or real-world currency. So they can make it so that players get frustrated because the game will artificially match them up with a higher skilled player or a player who has spent more money than the player who is losing in that match. And in turn, the player with higher spending might have better items and equipment that makes them more competitive and that might encourage the player who has been losing a lot to, you know, shell out some cash on microtransactions, pay to win monetization elements. That's one potential avenue to exploit this matchmaking system. And same goes with dynamic difficulty. By artificially making a game more difficult and nudging them towards the marketplace, it'll psychologically manipulate them into shelling out money out of frustration or out of envy. Jealousy is a very exploitable emotion and game companies know this. And then right here, we have a video I published back in January of 2018 that highlights a quote from the EOMM patent, the Engagement Optimized Matchmaking. And there is talk here of how, moreover, we can even change the objective function to other core game metrics of interest, such as playtime, retention, or spending. Now, EA has denied in the past that they've implemented this dynamic difficulty adjustment system from the patents. Back in June of 2019, a FIFA developer insisted that they've not implemented dynamic difficulty adjustment. So scrolling down here, your gamer actually quoted the developer who said, we have heard your concerns around the dynamic difficulty adjustment patent family and wanted to confirm it's not used in EA Sports FIFA. We would never use it to advantage or disadvantage any group of players against another in any of our games. The technology was designed to explore how we might help players that are having difficulty in a certain area of a game have an opportunity to advance. Again, I personally have no definitive evidence to be able to say for sure whether what EA is claiming is true or not, but there is certainly a lot of suspicion surrounding EA. A lot of people just straight up don't believe statements like these. Statements like, oh, we would never seek to exploit the players when so much of their core business revolves around exploiting players, which they have been doing for all of these years. And keep in mind that this isn't just an EA thing. This is something that a lot of the greedier AAA publishers are trying to pursue. Activision, for example, they file their own patent for microtransactions-minded matchmaking systems. Suffice to say that game companies are pushing hard to implement these kinds of manipulative systems that are dressed up as, oh, we're just trying to enhance the player experience by matching them up with the right people and by adjusting difficulty so they're not bored or frustrated but I mean we've already seen what these game companies are capable of without oversight and the lengths to which they're willing to go to monetize and exploit players there's no reason to believe they wouldn't do the same with these systems. Now, the question with EA and this class action lawsuit specifically is, did EA implement dynamic difficulty adjustment in their EA Sports title since as far back as 2017 without informing the public? And is that system implemented in such a way that it is clearly designed to 
further exploit players to psychologically manipulate players into spending. I obviously don't trust EA and never will if they continue to behave the way they've been doing these past few years. But at the same time, evidence is what's required. A proper investigation is needed to determine whether a system like this is there and whether it is being exploited in the way that it is suspected and in the way that EA is being accused of. So that's yet to be determined, but if there's one thing we can absolutely determine is that EA is facing a lot of major lawsuits based around one of the key aspects of their business model, loot boxes, which says a lot about the company and how they're conducting business. So that's the latest on Electronic Arts legal troubles. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest developments. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.